Hello there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your tarot reading. Um, I cannot apologize enough for the delay with this reading for you guys. Um, I know that you guys are always last, and unfortunately, I always have to start with Capricorns, and that just, you know, automatically puts you last, so I, I'm really, really sorry. So without further ado, um, let me just talk about what I was feeling when I shuffled out this, um, this spread for you guys. And then I'll talk about the images or the image images. Yeah, there are two that I saw. And then we'll go into the interpretation of the cards. Um, first of all, the word that I picked up for this, um, this reading is acceptance. Okay. And um, I, I feel like the acceptance basically indicates a situation where we're kind of like not really sure like we're kind of flip-flopping back and forth we're not really sure how are things going to turn out is it going to be bad is it going to be good and um acceptance can also indicate as well that we're coming into alignment with a situation accepting a situation accepting an outcome accepting that it is what it is okay no more wishful thinking no more making excuses and i feel like you might have been making excuses for other people for the way in which they behaved for the the the, the nature of that person uh rationalizing oh maybe they're like this because of these things that happened in their past maybe they're like that because you know they don't know any better like um you guys are quite benevolent and i feel like you give people the benefit of the doubt and then I also feel like there was a situation where you were hoping that things are not so. And so you try to rationalize or to try to justify why things went the way they did or why things happened a certain way, why somebody would be this way, why, just why, you know, like making sense of it in your own head, rationalizing so that it makes sense in your head. And so we're done with that okay and um, moving into 2020 2020 is a very solid and stable year and i like to think of this you know it reduces to a number four um for the energetic um flow of the year as a number four i like to think of it as a table there's like four legs to a table right and when all the legs are the same um the same width the same height the table is not wobbly okay and a wobbly table if you're trying to do work on it if you're trying to eat on it it can be really annoying because it makes noise it wobbles back and forth and it can feel very destabilizing and so four legs to a table if all the legs are of the same length the table is very sturdy the table doesn't wobble the table is grounded and you can you know pile books and and stuff and crap on top of the table and the table will not buckle under the pressure. So that's what this year is about for you guys. It's about building that foundation in a way where you don't get stressed out, you don't buckle under the pressure, where you can, you know, um, come into your own sense of empowerment and to be able to withstand and hold up a massive amount of weight and to feel stable. Okay, and I am seeing just now uh, an image of, you know, the god Atlas. Okay, so he's the, the bearer of the globe. So he has like the, the world on his shoulders. And yet he doesn't buckle under the pressure. Okay, so I feel like this is a year where we are building our foundation. This is a year where I feel like you're going to get a lot of spiritual guidance and a lot of spiritual assistance for you to you know start over begin anew and to build your foundation in a way that is solid long lasting and stable okay so those are the messages that came through and let me relay the two images that i saw for you the first image that i saw was uh, little red riding hood in the woods okay so it's funny because it's a raccoon so um, Little Red Riding Hood is, you know, typically a girl with a, a red cape on with like a little um, what are, it, a hood. OK, so a cape and a hood. 
and she's going to her grandmother's house, right? So most people are familiar with that story. She's going to her grandmother's house and little does she know that the wolf is um, aware of her presence in the woods and the wolf like preemptively got to her grandmother's out house, ate her grandmother and then dressed up as her grandmother trying to lure her to get closer to it so that it could swallow her whole. Okay, so that's pretty much the premise of Little Red Riding Hood. It's a very innocent, naive little girl uh, walking alone by herself through the woods to get to her grandmother's house. She has done this um, voyage many times in the past and nothing has ever happened to her and so she's doing it again. But what I'm seeing is instead of a little girl, I have a raccoon. So a raccoon looks is wearing a, a red cape with that red hood holding a little bit of a basket with cookies in it and flowers for her grandmother. So the raccoon is walking through the woods, which is really strange. Nowadays, when we see raccoons, we usually see them in a city landscape because, you know, they're scavengers. We have taken over their habitat and so they um, dig through our garbage. They um, come into our yard and, and, you know, a lot of people would agree that they are an invasive species, but we have to learn to share space with animals, right? And so I feel like we're encroaching upon their land and they have to find food somehow. And so they go wherever is convenient, which is digging through a trash can. So when I saw this uh, raccoon, I was like, OK, this is not a naive, you know, little girl, like a little red riding hood. This is not a stereotypical story about naivety and uh, walking through the woods. When I saw this raccoon, I was thinking more of um, it's, it's a very resourceful animal. It's also very, um, animals have really good instincts and they have heightened sense of, you know, senses pretty much. Being able to smell, being able to hear, being able to see at night. So it's a, a nocturnal animal. It's very sensitive to light, to movement, to noise. And so ever, if you ever like stumble across a raccoon, all you have to do is just like turn on the porch light and they will skimper away because they know how to take care of themselves. They're self-protective and they have um, heightened senses where they can avert danger, okay? So when I saw this raccoon in the woods uh, wearing the red cape, I was thinking, a Sagittarius, you have really grown up, okay? And I'm not saying that in any way to be patronizing. Um, I just feel like counter to that image of a red, you know, like a, a girl in the woods going to her grandmother's house, and facing all types of perils in the wood, being by herself. It's pretty naive, right? Like to walk into a situation uh, unarmed without knowledge of, wait a minute, this is quite dangerous. You know, um, over, I feel like in the past you might've been that way where you um, underestimate the um, potential, I, I guess like the potential perils in a situation, the potential dangers that could befall you because you guys are extremely, extremely buoyant and optimistic and you see the best in every situation. For some signs, especially Virgos or, or Scorpio even, it's like, oh, it's a, a scary dank woods. You know, there might be wild animals, there might be thieves, there might be bandits. But for a Sagittarius, it's like, oh, it's beautiful. It's unexplored, it's natural and it's free and it's wonderful. And so you will dash you know, straight ahead into the woods without provisions, without water. And you're so optimistic that, you know, things will always work out that a lot of the times I feel like you might dart or dash into something without fully thinking about the consequences, okay? However, with this imagery, I feel like there might have been something that happened in your past that has uh, really made you, uh, I want to say, wise up. And once again, please, um, I'm not saying it in any way to um, belittle you or to patronize you. I, I really am not. I just feel like there's a, a maturation process where you're a lot more careful, you're a lot more methodical, and being cautious and being, you know, uh, well informed. It's always positive, right? So I feel like with this raccoon, he's responsive to smells, to sights, to noise. He's looking around him, walking through this woods and he's enjoying, like it's his natural habitat. He has grown and adapted to this environment. 
and he is aware there are perils. He's not starry-eyed and innocent and naive. He's aware that there are perils. He's aware that there could be bigger creatures, carnivores, that might devour him. He's also aware there might be, you know, um, poisonous insects, snakes, spiders, etc. So he is fully aware. So he's making this trek through an environment that he is familiar with and very used to and um, keeping his wits about him. Okay, so that's really good for me to see for, for many of you. But I feel like this is a result of a situation where you might have dashed in and in, in your naivety, in your youth or in your optimism, you might not have uh, consider all the, the, the ramifications or all the consequences that could, you know, result, that could be, that could serve as the outcome in that situation. But you have learned. And I feel like something happened where I'm sensing... I'm sensing that you could not make sense of it. That's what it feels like to me. I, I feel like something happened that, that really hurt you. I'm sorry, Sagittarius. I feel that it, it really hurt you. And I feel that even though it really hurt you, you still can't make sense of it. And I feel like you might have been dealing with another person that really hurt you. And you don't know and I'm really sorry, it's, you don't know if what they did was intentional. That's what it seems like to me. You don't know if they do this to you specifically just to hurt you, or if they do this to everybody because, you know, there, there's something cognitively or just emotionally wrong with that person where they're not aware of their actions and consequences or they're not aware of it. It's, it's almost like you were taking it very personally. This person hurt me, but now you're starting to see the big picture and you're like, wait a minute, this person, you know, would do this to anybody, to everybody in their lives. And so it's not just about me. I shouldn't take this personally. And so the, the, the moment that you start to see that, that light bulb moment happens for you and you're able to make sense of it okay so what I saw was this we have here the ten of swords and the ten of swords is like backstabbing betrayal right it's a situation where someone says a lot of hurtful things to us okay the sword this is the ten of feathers ten of swords the feathers represent the sword energy thoughts communication words things blurted out without consideration, things that are said that have been very hurtful, and especially somebody doing something to us um, in a sneaky way because snakes are, you know, the symbol of temptation, the symbol of um, somebody that is twisted and jealous and, and people that we can't trust. But I feel like, you know, however this has played out in your life, I feel as if the way you have looked at this situation with the temperance card you have been very patient in dealing with this person you have been very patient in trying to understand like why are they behaving like this are they really aware of their actions are they really aware of what they're saying are they really aware of how much they've hurt me and i feel like you were fumbling around in the dark trying to make sense of this situation with this person Queen of Swords, okay? The Queen of Swords is about rationality. It's about cutting through the fog and the illusions and the, the lies we tell ourselves in order to make sense of things, in order to kind of get at the truth. And when I look at this card, it's a bat in a cave, right? And bats are also nocturnal animals. In this cave, presumably, it's very, very dark. It's very humid, possibly. It's very dank. It's, it's not a good place for a Sagittarius person to be in. And this is where I felt like you were residing. And first of all, you can't see, you know, it's dark, it's dank. It probably smells really musty. It probably feels very humid and potentially hot 
or even really cold and you can't feel your way around you don't know what's around the corner you don't know what's in the cave you don't know what's out to get you it's an environment where I feel like no one wants to be in but it's more so for a Sagittarius to not be able to see to have the the, the open space it, it, it can feel very claustrophobic and hard to breathe and uncomfortable in this situation where you were dealing with this person for some of you this is like a physical dwelling like a house where you're not comfortable in it for whatever reason there might have been water damage there might have been mold uh, build up over the years there might also be like you know pesky neighbors invasive neighbors nosy neighbors there might have also been um, like like a lot of restriction you don't have your own space there's not enough lighting all the electrical circuits might be malfunctioning you don't have enough visibility and so if it's a home environment where you feel this way or a relationship situation it feels very trapped like stagnancy trapped and unstable and just you know uncomfortable it, it feels very uncomfortable to me and you were stuck in it for a very long time the hangman this is suspended animation limbo not able to make sense of things because bats are blind and as a result of not being able to make sense of things you're not able to make decisions you're not able to be decisive and so you were stuck in this space okay and so what i feel happened that happened here is um the one thing that helped you overcome and get out of this space here is for you to look at a situation either through a different lens a different perspective flipping a situation around so we're seeing it from a different point of view and the hangman is all about that like getting higher wisdom through you know hanging upside down looking at a situation from from a different vantage point being able to kind of like uh, get out of our own head get out of our own framework that we have always relied on to look at the world optimism there's a reason for everything uh you know there's human goodness there's that sense of you know humanity and everything will will work out and and um people will you know all, all the things will be righted again i feel like this was a very optimistic but also very naive type of um lens that you were using to look at this situation and when i mention you know i feel like there was somebody who who hurt you i i still feel that and i feel that you were trying to make sense of it like there's a right and a wrong how could this person not know they were doing the wrong things how could this person not know that their behavior is hurting other people. How could this person not know that what they're doing is not acceptable? So you're looking at the world through your lens of right and wrong. Everything is black and white. There's no room for gray areas, right? If an action hurts a person, it is wrong. If an action uplifts people, it is right. And so you're dealing with somebody who has a very twisted moral compass and they don't see the world in black and white the way that you do. They see it possibly in a gradient, you know, of like white, grays and black. They rationalize, justify to make their actions suitable for whatever situation they're in. I feel like there's somebody here with a very twisted moral compass. They might not know right from wrong. And I feel like in your interactions with them, like I said, you felt like, oh my gosh, they hurt me. They did this personally to me. And then when you dive deep, okay, the whale, the world, it's about things coming full circle, having a very deep understanding of something, needing to, needing to dive really, really deep in this uncomfortable emotional space so that we can get some type of enlightenment. Diving really, really deep and then coming up for air. And air is about clarity. So I feel like there's something that happened here. 
Um, you've gone through a process in 2019 that allowed you to come into some major enlightenment about the people in your life, their motives, and the way in which you operate and your motives. And we're coming now, emerging from this bat cave, coming up for air, coming into the light with the sun, where things are being illuminated. And the major illumination for you was this situation where it's like, oh, this person, you know, did this to everybody in their lives. It's not just me. They have a habit of sabotaging their relationships. They have a habit of possibly using people for their own gains. They have a habit of, a habit, excuse me, hoarding, hoarding resources, um, loving with strings attached, um, being bogged down with their own trust issues, not letting people in, shutting doors, shutting opportunities for themselves, however they operate. And for some of you, this could be like a, even a boss, somebody who's hostile to work with. For others of you, I do see more of like a family member and especially a love relationship partner, especially even um, like a, a significant other. And you're starting to see this that, you know, I, I can't really take this personally because they do this to everybody. This is just their MO. This is just the, the method of operation. This is just what they do. And they don't have a sense of moral compass the way that I do. And they don't have, you know, that clear sense of black and white. They see the world in gradients, right? So once you come into this awareness, and a lot of the times too, um, the, the, the calm that comes about with enlightenment and with um, realization is, is very, like, it's very powerful. Because whatever has been bothering us, you know, mentally, is able to, th there's a spotlight shown on it. And then there's an answer for everything. So we come into the sense of awareness about a situation, a revelation about a situation, about a person, about a thing. And I feel like it, it everything becomes clear. You're, you're lucid. Okay, you're seeing things very, very clearly now. And it frees you from being in this space where you're constantly wondering. And so it's a very empowering space to be in. And I'm really glad that you have come into this sense of acceptance, okay? For January 2020, I'm really glad to see this. This sense of acceptance, this sense of calm, this sense of like, okay, I'm regaining my balance. I, I get it and I'm not taking it personally. It's not about me. It is, you know, it is what it is. And we need to, you know, embrace that and we need to kind of move on from it, release it and move on from it. And so what I feel here is a major spiritual awakening, a major realization from your end about a long-standing issue that has really kept you stuck and kept you in the dark and you're releasing it. You're like this um, multicolored hummingbird, you know, buzzing about, sucking up the nectars of life, right? Uh, being free and I feel as well very hopeful and seeing what life has in store for you. So this is basking in the glory and in, in the sunlight. So this is a very positive card. And I feel that a major cycle has ended in your life where you're no longer kept in the dark. You're no longer afraid. You're moving in with like um, a lot more spiritual awareness. And I also feel there is a shedding away, leaving behind that sense of naivety that we are invincible that i can charge into this situation and everything will work out you're realizing that you need to be a little bit more um i want to say prepared so preparation you need to be prepared you need to anticipate outcomes that you hadn't anticipated right and i know that sounds like how can you anticipate something that you that that is not that you're not aware of but I feel like it's, you know, about being smart. It's about being a little bit more thorough when we talk about outcomes and when we talk about 
um, consequences. Coming into a situation with eyes wide open, like that raccoon, okay? Being vigilant, taking care of yourself, and using your senses, all of your senses, to the best of your capabilities, so that you can alert yourself when there's trouble, so that you can uh, protect yourself, protect yourself, self-protection, okay? And I'm, I'm really happy to see this. Um, I also feel for, um, actually, let me talk about the other message or the other image that I saw. So I see this cartoon, um, I don't know, it, it's a cartoon human. It is drawn very crudely with just lines, okay, black and white too. Almost like a comic book style, stick figures almost. So what I see is there is a, it's, it's the ground, right? And there's a cartoon person standing on top of the ground. And the ground is moving up and down. And I feel like there might have been an earthquake. And then the, the, the person is like moving up and down, shaking along with the earth. And then the earthquake subsides. And then the other person, the, the cartoon person finds their footing again. Like their, their feet are then planted firmly on the ground. And this is what I, um, thought about too when I saw that image was you know the the four legs to a table okay you're building up your four legs you're building up your capability and your ability to handle adversity that might come your way you're able to pack on the the, the responsibilities and just, you know, all the things that you need to withhold or, or all the things that you need to withstand and you're becoming a much stronger person. And um, with that earthquake, it's almost like, it's a force of nature. It is something that is um, outside of our control, right? Sometimes things happen, not because we made decisions to allow them to happen, but sometimes, you know, things happen that are outside of our control. So no matter how prepared we are, we can't anticipate these things. And so I feel like it's learning to roll with the punches. It's learning to understand that even when the ground is shaking around us, even when the ground is shaking around us, when we are firm in ourselves, then we can find our center of gravity and we can never be knocked down from the, the, the shaking of the earth, okay? So I guess what I'm saying or what I'm trying to say is that life has dealt you many blows, Sagittarius, and you're still strong, you're still here. You're still in this present moment watching this video, which means that you're so much, you're, you're capable of, of, of so much more, okay? Um, the, the earthquake hasn't, you know, hasn't destroyed your resolve, your faith in life, your faith in humanity. So whatever you've been through, you're starting a new phase now. And so don't let things destabilize you. Don't let a, a, a rumbling of the earth scare you into retreating back to your lair don't go back to that dark space because you have taken a long time to you know crawl out of it so at the nearest or at the the um, earliest sign of a rumble of trouble don't walk back into that hole don't retreat does that make sense because I feel as if it's like once burned, twice shy. I don't want to put myself in that situation. I don't want to um, be hurt. Okay. And so it, it's really telling you here that, you know, things are different now. Things are different now. You don't need to revert back into that cave. Um, I feel for many of you, you might have gone through like a bout of depression. And uh, whatever means that you have utilized to, you know, um, get out of it. I feel like there might be triggers or, or, or things that like uh, triggering events that happened recently that kind of made you want to crawl back into that hole, into that, that, that dark state. And it's really 
I feel like your spiritual advice here is, you know, find things to do to occupy your time. Swimming, you know, uh, outdoor activities, whatever it is. Um, keep yourself occupied to, to get away from that dark space, okay? So that is pretty much the first four cards. We're going to shift gears here. I'm going to clear that up, that energy. And then we're going to talk about the last six cards. I have here the King of um, Acorns. This is the King of Wands and the Magician. So this is your energy here. Fire energy, okay? This is somebody who's ready to charge forward. I feel like you're still upset with that person. You're, you're still upset. And um, fire signs, when they feel things, they feel things very passionately, okay? So if it's like um, love, it's very passionate. It's very like, I'll, I'll shout it from the rooftop. If it's hate, it's really deep and it is very, very passionate and fiery as well. I feel like you are very upset and hurt and possibly you're, you might hate a person that what they took from you. And I feel like the emotions are very complex. I'm hearing as well, you know, my best years. This is a, um, like my, my best years, the best years of my life. I was willing to fight for you and you're, you weren't willing to fight for me. I was willing to give it my all and you were giving me crumbs. That's what it seems like to me. And then, you know, once again, energies can be reversed. If you're on the, the other side of the coin, I feel like someone is very upset. But I feel like it's it's more so you because your energy is so fiery and vibrant. I feel that you're very pissed about an, with another person based on their history in the past. I feel like somebody was very greedy. You know, they wanted their cake and eat it too. Um, I feel like they were hoarding. Okay, I, I keep seeing like a lot of hoarding. This is the snake in his little hole and all those feathers, like just hoarding, um, hoarding resources. And I, I feel like you're very upset with this person and uh, you hate yourself that you're upset with them because I feel like you guys are very fair and you guys don't like to, you know, the, the negative emotions don't bode well with a Sagittarius. Sagittarius likes to, you know, forgive, forget, and move on. You don't want to be bogged down with negative emotions. And especially, you're so optimistic that thinking negatively, having negative feelings, uh, having being just, you know, in, in that state, it, it can make you feel really uncomfortable. And so you hate yourself that like, oh, I shouldn't be petty. I should just get over it. But I feel like what they did really hurt you on a fundamental level. And it, it was such a, a really, like, it's such a visceral reaction that you have to this person. It's really hard to forget. And we have as well, crowning this reading, is willpower creation. This is the magician, okay? And with that infinity symbol, I'm inclined to say, you know, that is like higher knowledge, higher wisdom. You are here. And I feel that you're conflicted as well because, you know, uh, you understand that our baser selves, our human manifestations, sometimes we don't make the best decision. And so you're ready to forgive this person. And then I also feel like, you know, you're trying to operate from this space of higher wisdom, wanting to forgive and understanding that our human selves make mistakes but our higher selves should forgive and forget, okay? And then I also sense as well, I'm not explaining this well. Uh, give me just a moment, let me get this message. You want to, for, it, it's like you're forgiving this person on a spiritual level, but on a human level in this realm, in this earth, it is really difficult to for, forget or forgive this person. You're trying to operate from here, which is really 
loving of you. You don't want to hold grudges. You don't want to wish them the, the, the worst, you know, because you're very exalted and you, you understand why they are the way that they are. You're not taking this personally. You understand that there might be something innately wrong with this person that is crippling their ability to love and their ability to, to do the right thing, okay? And so I do see an inner conflict playing out, but I do feel at the end of the day, you're looking at your higher power and um, you're, you're operating from your higher self and you're looking to forgive this person. And so I wanna conclude this reading here. I do sense there is going to be a renewal, okay? You're no longer going back. There isn't a, a reconciliation. But I do sense there is um, regret coming through from the other person, believe it or not. There is regret, okay? Um, for many of you, you might have like said, you know, you might have tried to manifest an apology. They owe me an apology. I want to make sure that they understand that, you know, what they did was not acceptable. I want them to understand that this is not acceptable behavior because not only did they hurt me, they're capable of hurting so many more people if they continue down this path, right? So you're really looking, you're, you're really looking to save them from human or save humanity from this person. And you're really looking to, you know, you wish and pray that this person would change for the better, not to come back to you, but for the better, for the betterment of the world, for, for, for themselves, for their sake, because you still care about that person. And so you might have manifest, try to manifest like a, an apology from that person and it is coming. Okay. The, the way their energy is right here. Ace of Wands, Ace of Acorns, Ace of Wands. This is a really beautiful card. I don't feel like it's a good depiction of the Ace of um, Ace of Wands. I don't feel like it's a good um, depiction of it, but it says here, creative force and confidence. And so what I feel with this energy is um, it's a new renewal for you okay the the fire is your energy it's something new it's being smarter it's taking care of yourself growing these horns so that you can you know protect yourself right so that you can ram into situations and into other people that might try to hurt you in the future so that you can defend yourself okay growing thorny not in a bad way um self-protection but I feel as if, so that's why I said this is not a good depiction of it, but I just really love this deck and the imagery. For some of you, you might be, you might have been hurt by somebody that, you know, like a, a Capricorn, a Taurus, an Aries, somebody that has, you know, the, the horn characteristic. Okay, so Capricorn, Aries, Taurus, I think that's it. And I do sense they are looking at you in, in, in that regard with this ace of page of cups here, page of shells, page of cup, it's a frog. They're looking at each other, okay? One animal is very vulnerable. The other animal has their, their, their horns ready to fight, okay? Or like armor. And so what I feel is a situation where the two of you are looking at each other and I do see a tremendous sense of remorse and regret from the other person's side. I feel like this is their energy. Vulnerable and very scared. Exposed, soft flesh. And you know, this can be pricked very easily. It's a small, delicate animal with a very thin membrane for skin. And you know, it, it's out into the world trying to find itself trying to grow and I feel like it's looking at you it knows that you have geared up that you're thick skin you're no longer vulnerable 
And I feel like the person is afraid. The person is ashamed. I do feel a tremendous sense of wanting to, 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 to say an apology, but not able to. And then I also feel as if they are, for the very first time, looking back at their actions, okay? With the Ten of Swords and the Temperance card. This is um, a depiction of you, but I feel as if both entities, you and the other person, once again, looking at um, each other, looking at things through that lens of black and white, you know, this was wrong, I messed up, I shouldn't have done this. And I feel a lot of remorse coming through from their end because finally they're getting it. For some of you, the person that you might have, you know, been dealing with, Aries, Taurus, Capricorn, uh, Water Sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And if you are going through this or if you have gone through it in the past, you're in a very good space right now. And you're operating from that higher space of being where you're willing to forgive. And I also feel as if you're willing to let bygones be bygones, okay? Which is great, Sagittarius, because we don't like to hold grudges. Okay, we like to move on. We're, we're not patient enough to sit there and deal with another person with their hang-ups and their baggage and, you know... Uh, their inability to see actions and consequences. We don't really have time. We bounce back pretty quickly, thank God. And so I feel like you're going to be okay. Um, I just want to say, though, that I, I do feel a lot of remorse coming through from the other person. And I feel like they wish things were different. They start to see the the, the consequences of their actions. And they're looking at you boldly moving on you know, having a bright future ahead of you. And I feel like it scares them to know that they've been left behind. Okay. Um, I apologize for if this reading is grim. I hope that, you know, it, it's, um, it's giving you peace. I hope that it's giving you closure. Um, I feel like you're going to get some communication and apology from another person. Uh, they feel it. You know, and so they're going to communicate that. But I feel like the communication is not going to be like, I am so sorry that this happened. It's going to be very slow, very shy, very like um, subtle. Okay. Because I know that they, they know they messed up. And they don't know how to approach you because they're very afraid. Okay. Um give it some time you don't have to respond if the message comes you don't have to respond you respond whenever you're ready sagittarius all right i will leave it at that um for those of you who are still emailing me about private readings i don't do them anymore i do have a colleague her name is bridget she's based out of california if you're interested in a, a reading for yourself or for anyone you know if you're looking for guidance and things like that, um, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. The link for her website where you can book a reading, schedule a reading, um, is in the description box below, okay? I hope that um, we start out this year with a lot of positivity, a lot of peace, a lot of acceptance, and just a lot of good faith again, all right? Best of luck with everything. I promise, I promise, I promise. Um, I will do your reading on time for next week i'm going to start the readings as soon as i finish your sign so i'm going to go back through all the signs starting with um capricorns by the way i have to and i get this a lot in my emails i have to start with capricorn because it's an earth sign but also um my eighth house is in capricorn and eighth house is where you access spiritual psychic energy so when i start out with capricorn and i go through all the signs in you know chronological order then the readings just seem a lot more complete if i jump around then i just feel like i don't get a good reading and that's why you know unfortunately your sign is last but we'll see what i can do in the future okay um either way take care of yourself sagittarius i hope that you have had a wonderful birthday time and i wish the world of good things for you guys for this year okay take care